Well, welcome back to Tuts Plus. My name's Simon Plant, and today we're going to look at uh, compositing. Now, this video is really about me giving you some advice, and um, it's only a short video, so we're going to concentrate on uh, and on compositing full images into a background. By that, I mean maybe a full length of a person with with say like with a bike, or maybe it might be an animal. But you're seeing the whole of them. You're not seeing a three quarter. Like for instance, this type of image, which you see a lot of, uh, it doesn't show the whole whole of the model here and the feet. It's just showing a three quarter shot. And the, and a lot of time, I'm not saying all the time, but a lot of time I think people do that because they're a lot easier to produce than having to obviously worry about the placement of the feet and the shadows fusing into the background, uh, which can be a bit tricky to do. Now we're going to start off with this image. Now this is the, my first tip, it's really a bit of an obvious one, um, but I, I thought it was worth, um, worth just, just telling you about it anyway because um, it's going to save you a lot of grief, uh, time and, and hassle. Um, Sometimes when you're doing a composite image, um, you may want to change the background, like in this image. This image actually was a, a shot I did for uh, a, a client. I used to photograph a lot of cars. And uh, I decided uh, when I started doing the videos that I would use this as a, as a video on car retouching, retouching bodywork. So that was the idea behind this one. So what I actually started off with was actually the car sat um, on an airfield. And um, I thought, well, I knew I wanted to change the background and create a tutorial on it, but um, I didn't really particularly want to um, have to change the road. The, I, I thought the road or the surface here I could use. So that's what I did. I didn't bother to go out and uh, find a new bit of tarmac or a new bit of road for this car to go on. Um, if I had, obviously, I would have to then obviously drop that in. I would have to make sure the reflections uh, matched um, the, the, the road, ideally. Um, and uh, also, then we've got to worry about the shadow sometimes you can't use the existing shadow so you have to recreate that and that's never just one layer that's obviously made up of several layers and you've got to get the density right and the color and everything so it's a lot more work and a lot of time you know you've got no choice but if you can use the existing surface that the object is actually sat on you're going to save yourself a whole load of uh, a load of work, uh, and that's what I did with this one. So that'd be my first tip: if you can put the person or object on um, sat on a the ground that you can use in the final composite, then also always look at that option because it's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of retouching. Now, the next image we're going to show you is this one of um, Henry VIII. Now this image is uh, a picture I did of um, a guy called uh, Mike who's uh, an impersonator of Henry VIII and he lives not too far from me. Uh, I'm also blessed that we've got some uh, of the uh, of England's best country uh, steady homes not too far from me as well. So I had this idea of photographing Mike uh, with a with a background which I was, I was going to have to probably create um, of from several images of this beautiful uh, English kind of hedge and and, and a tree, and have him stood on some grass. Now that's um, that was all that was all great, and uh, the the grass is actually uh, the grass that Mike was stood on, but it wasn't quite that simple. Now the reason being is that I wanted this landscape picture um, for the final image. That's what I had in my mind, and uh, I uh, to do that I, I could have done that, but the mic would have been a little bit smaller in the frame, and uh, I really wanted to make the most get the most resolution from my camera as possible, and uh, so therefore I wanted to shoot him um, in an upright format and fill the frame as much as possible. So that's the reason why I decided uh, to add the grass in uh, separately uh, and isolate. Um, mic on a separate layer so that I could uh, get the most resolution from the camera and uh, the, one of the reasons <clears throat> I wanted to shoot the grass that was there not only was it you know it's perfect for the scene but it's always going to be better to photograph the elements and use the elements that are actually in the scene, the same scene as your main object. Um, for instance, the, the lighting on this one, um, a lot of my pictures involved sort of quite diffuse lighting, that's what I like. Um, but this one is a little bit different, it's got a little bit more modelling to it, a little bit harsher, and it's got all these shadows. So whatever ground or grass I uh, was going to photograph for this had to match that lighting. 
We also need to match the, the camera height, uh, the perspective, um, and also uh, another probably less obvious thing you need to think about is that if, if the object um, is sharp, say here, on, say on Mike's feet, if your Mike's feet are sharp, which they are, your background also has to match that uh, that sharpness range. You can't have it uh, soft here, then have the sharpness come in behind it. It won't match up. So in this case, I literally just kept the camera settings as they were and just photographed some of the grass that was already uh, in the scene. So that is the other tip. If you need to put other elements in uh, close around uh, your main object, then try and uh, try and see if you can harvest them from the location itself while you're there um, and, and try and keep the lighting consistent and uh, and the camera obviously consistent with the focusing and, and the perspective and all sorts. It just takes out that little bit extra uh, extra hassle uh, from uh, from and complicating uh, complicating things that little bit further so that was kind of the final image on that one um, and uh, that worked out quite well um, and it's just saved me uh, saved me a lot of again extra work um, to go off and uh, find new elements to put in all these came from within I would say 20 foot of where I photographed Mike apart from the birds Now, if all else fails, you're going to have to obviously uh, create the uh, the image from um, from pretty much scratch and use a completely different background. So you need to make sure that uh, obviously all the elements, the lighting um, is fairly consistent, uh, the perspective is consistent, the camera height, etc. And uh, most importantly, it's the, it's the shadows, getting those shadows right. If I just uh, show you this picture, this is a, a picture of a, a guy or a young lad called Ro uh, Ryan, who's a championship cyclist, and uh, I photographed him actually in um on uh, near our studio which is based on a farm and I actually photographed him in one of the old silage pits which is uh which is very glamorous which is um obviously concrete just concrete background and concrete floor so it's fairly neutral and um and uh, and the lighting was fairly soft and subdued so um this is what i ended up with uh, this is the picture of him isolated from the background and i want to put him into this background that i already had on file so i had to bear in mind when i was shooting it make sure that the camera angle was um was fairly consistent and the lighting was going to work and i think it did uh, on this image um, but the most important thing is uh, is the shadows if i take these shadows out here you can see it's literally just floating on the background so it's very important to get the shadows right and this particular one the shadows are, I've uh, obviously had to make sure the, co the color of the shadows kind of fitting with the background there and the obviously the density of them as well and we've also got uh, we've got an overall shadow for um, him and the bike but we've also got some other shadows underneath uh, underneath the the bicycle tires and also his shoes some harder shadows so really making fuse in the background so too much to cover here but um, you just got to obviously make sure that you get the, the shadows looking correct for the lighting of the background etc and uh, as I said uh, I might try and do another video uh, coming up all about making those fi uh, finishing touches in res in with uh, with uh, in, in respect to the coloring of the images to make everything blend and fuse together with the background so i hope there's a few tips there um that ha will help you with your compositing if you go if you want to do some full lengths or composite composite some full images into a background scene i hope this video is going to help you achieve that quickly and painlessly and if you need to bite the bullet then obviously you need to uh, just make sure that all your elements kind of match in terms of perspective uh camera height etc and also the lighting and the most importantly i think is getting those shadows and making the image really kind of the finishing touches really fused with the background image thanks for watching i hope to catch you on the next video cheers